Hi and welcome everybody to this week's new video. I want to talk about a way that you can help save money on your large language model utilization. So you typically pay by tokens. Tokens will be pretty much the length of what the language model has to analyze. But sometimes you might have users who ask the same question all the time. What is the capital of France? What else could they have? Is Next.js good? And sometimes paying over and over for a really similar answer can be frustrating. So I love this little package called Semantic Cash by Upstash. They are a company that focuses on making Redis in a serverless fashion, which I think is a fantastic product, but we'll explore a bit later. So they released also a vector database offering. So a vector database basically lets you store content that can be used in large language models. So the Semantic Cache is a way that, for example, you can save answers that your users ask to large language models. And if somebody asks that question again, something that would be, let's say, similar. So let's say this person here asks, what is the capital of the USA? It, you answer Washington, DC. The next time somebody asks a similar question, US capital, you already have a similar question answered. So you can use that answer to save money and not have to hit OpenAI or Entropic again. So let's create one in Next.js to see how it works. And let's jump right in. All right, so here we are in the Upstash dashboard. You will have the option of logging with Google, GitHub, or Amazon. I'm already logged in, so I'll skip over that step. In here, you have a lot of services by Upstash. At the top, you can choose what you want to create. And for our own tutorial, we will be using a vector database. I already created one before, so I will go ahead instead in creating a new one, which I will say my database. The region doesn't really matter. It's more to make sure you are close to your users. Personally, I'm going to stick with the default here. What is important is the embedding model. The embedding model is what will translate your text into something usable by the cache and by the LLM later on. If you pick a small model like BG small here, it will be faster, but have less precision. So it will find the similarities a little bit less properly. However, if you want to have a lot of precision, you would do something like a large one. You would have more dimensions, so it will be more precise. It's going to find more similarities with your text better. So you have to choose between what you want. Personally, I'm trying to optimize for speed currently, so I will stick with the small one. I will keep the default metric as cosine similarity. And, oh, here, just need to adapt the name. All right, let us create our database. I will stick with the pay-as-you-go plan. This is going to take a few minutes. I'll catch you back up when this is done. All right, so I created a little demo application here to dive a little bit deeper into how this would work once we have set up all our Upstash vector database. And let's explore the code a little bit. So first of all, if we head to the package JSON, the package I'm using, and this will be on GitHub, I'm using the AI SDK by Vercel. I'm using the vector database package by Upstash and their semantic cache package also. The rest is pretty standard. I created here a small search bar that just will serve to display our results. Basically, the only thing that matters for this demo is this part right here, which will be pretty much a search API that I created, an endpoint. Let's see what this endpoint does. So first of all, if we go to the endpoint, I am importing OpenAI here because I'll be using GPT-40 to ask questions, and I will be calling the generate text here method by Vercel AI. But more importantly, I created this semantic cache object with getters and setters. Let's see what it does. Pretty simply, we are importing the index and the semantic cache constructors from upstash vector and upstash semantic cache. We are simply creating a vector database, an index to store relevant information that will be similar, and I am creating a semantic cache. Here, what's important is the proximity. We can set the minimum proximity. This will mean it will be a little bit more precise. So if I ask a question, for example, that says, is my bottle red? The proximity, if I ask another time the question, is my soup red? 95% wouldn't cut it. So this means we want to have a really similar answer to answer back with the results. And there, if we look at the API route, to put it simply, we first always try to hit our database to see if the question has been asked before. If it has been asked, result will be defined, and we will answer back with the previous result already stored in the database. If not, we will ask the question to GPT-40 or any other LLM model that you want to use, and after that, we will make sure to save that result in our database so that the next time it is asked, we can answer here with our 
result and save money on API costs to OpenAI. And finally, we just return the result from the LLM here. Let's see it in action. So let's say I will ask the capital of Canada. Here, this is not in my database. So the loading takes a little bit. Like we saw, it took us almost three seconds to get an answer. Let's ask it again. What is the capital of the Canadian Federation? Let's see here. Oh my God, this was much faster, exactly almost 10 times faster. And as you saw, the question is not the exact same one. However, it is semantically, so it is lexically, I mean, meaning the words are similar enough that we have similarity between the answers. So we know we can safely answer our previous answer that we had in our upstash database. And there we have it. So for the future, if I refresh and I ask the same question again, what is the capital of Canada? Again, super fast answer, under a second. And so this is how you can save money by using Upstash Semantic Cache. Neat little package. I will make all of this available on GitHub. And please, please subscribe if you want more of these AI explorations because making AI product development is still something new. It takes a lot of research. So I put a lot of time into these videos to find you these nice little packages and, and ways of working. So please like this video and subscribe to the channel and see you next week.